Unless you're still stuck in your 2020 lockdown social pod, you'd be well aware that Google has been making some massive changes to the way that exact match keywords now operate in 2023. And these changes to how exact match keywords now operate is essentially forcing you to use broad match keywords in Google Ads. Now, although it may seem like these changes have come out of the blue, Whereas in fact, this changing to how exact match keywords operate has been a process that has been ongoing since 2014. In 2014, they started to make some initial changes to how exact match keywords operate and that they started to allow some plurals to be added into the targeting for exact match keywords. And then they also introduced this term that Google would still trigger your ads for exact match keywords if the user used what they called a close variant. And then after the hysteria died down in that in 2018, Google released some further changes to the way that exact match keywords operate. And this was the first time we saw that Google said that it was gonna to start to use machine learning that would allow your ads to be triggered for exact match keywords that you had selected if Google's machine learning felt that the user's search term matched the same meaning or same intent as your exact match keyword. And that brings us to the current way that exact match keywords are operating when they took this a step further in late 2021 and they stopped targeting the keywords that you had selected and went 100% to targeting the meaning or the search or intent of that exact match keyword. And the example that Google gives on its own documentation and its support website is that if you had the exact match keyword of grass cutting service, that your ads could trigger for user search terms like lawn mowing service. And I've even found in real world experience that this would target other search terms from users like get my lawn mode. So in the current environment, you can actually see that exact match keywords are not anything like exact match keywords. So it's not how they used to operate in that you had to get the spelling right and the order right for your ads to trigger. And realistically, it shouldn't even be called exact match targeting anymore because it just doesn't operate like that. Now, I have been hearing some talk from unsolicited sources that Google is gonna be completely removing the option to be able to use exact match keywords later on this year. And to be honest, that's something that I'm not gonna weigh into because for me, that's not really a real concern anyway. And the reason for that is because rather than getting into hysteria of what Google is gonna do or what they may not do, my focus is purely looking at the data and what is working right now. And that's what I wanted to focus on in this video is to take you through the correct way that you need to be structuring your broad match keywords if you wanna see continued success with Google Ads in 2023. Because like it or love it, you are gonna to have to be using broad match keywords even if you're not using it now, you're gonna to have to be incorporating broad match keywords in the very near future. And using broad match keywords is something that I don't want you to be stressed about because when you do it in the correct way, I've been able to see time and time again that it produces great results for my clients. But above that, it actually saves a lot of time because when you use broad match keywords in the way that I'm about to show you, you are no longer required to have to go through the long process of doing extended keyword research and then breaking all of those keywords into single keyword ad groups. Groups. And because I remember going back pre-2020 that this keyword research, if you had a larger account or for a client who had a large number of different products or services that they wanted to market, this keyword research process could take a good three to four hours. But by the time you've done the research on all the possible keyword variations, broken them out into different keyword themes, and then broken those keyword themes into your different ad groups so that you could break them down to those single keyword ad groups. And as I've said time and time again, over the last 12 months, that whole single keyword ad group or SCAGs as people know them as, it just doesn't work anymore and it's not an up-to-date strategy if you wanna see success with Google Ads. Right now, when I'm reviewing accounts, the biggest problem that I see with people when they're using broad match keywords is that they don't have enough words in their keyword phrase. Because what you need to remember and the, the core crux of what has changed here from Google Ads is that they are no longer targeting the words that you are selecting and they are now targeting the meaning of those words. So what is really, really important here is that you wanna be giving Google a broad match keyword with at least three, but ideally four, five, six, or even more different words in that keyword phrase. Because remember when broad match keywords was targeting the words in that phrase, 
it would target any search term that had those words in the phrase. So if you were targeting something like jet ski hire, anything that said jet ski hire would be targeted. But what you wanna do and the trick for success with broad match keyword targeting is that you wanna have a much longer sentence that you're targeting. And this is so that Google can understand the intent or the meaning that you're actually wanting to target. Now, the reason for why Google has gone this way is because it's using more and more AI or automated learning in its targeting and its algorithms. And we do know that from these AI generated tools, whether it be BARD or whether that be ChatGTP, is that the more information you give those AI tools, the better results you're gonna get. Think of it like this, if you went to one of these AI tools and you asked them to give you an employment contract, they would give you a pretty standard employment contract. But if you gave them extra information that you are an Australian-based IT company where you wanna employ people on a contractor agreement who are based overseas and that all of the IP that was generated throughout that employment contract is retained in the ownership of the Australian company. If you were to give those AI learning tools, they that information you would get a much more accurate response and the reason for that is because you've given them more data about what you're really wanting to achieve the same is true with broad match keywords and google ads the more words you're giving so the longer that phrase is the google is able to actually see the true intent of what type of search terms you are looking to target so in this weird way a broad match keyword could actually be more targeted when it's set in the right way. And let me give you a real life example of how this would work. Let's just say that you're a company and you sell blue and white 100% cotton pool towels. You know, the stock standard ones of any resort. And what you're wanting to do is you wanna make it very, very clear that you only wanna target users who are looking for 100% cotton towels that are used in those resorts or pools all around the world, and you're not looking to target those search terms about those new funky sand resistant towels or towels that have different blends. You're wanting to purely focus on people who are searching for 100% cotton pool towels. You don't want weird round ones, you just want the stock standard towels that we've all used at different times in our life. By creating a broad match keyword phrase that said 100% cotton blue and white pool towels, as opposed to having a broad match keyword of pool towels, you would get a lot better results and you would see a lot less wasted traffic. And the reason for that is because the keyword target that you've given Google is a lot more specific. Or if you're promoting the installation for split system air conditioning units, rather than just writing air conditioning installation, if you did a broad match keyword of new split system air conditioning installation, you're adding in those extra words which lets Google know that you're not wanting to target ducted air conditioning or people re installing old air conditioning units or those box air conditioning units that you're specifically focusing on the installation of brand new split system air conditioning units. So you can see that in both of these cases by using a broad match keyword phrase that had you know four, five, six or seven different words in it gives that extra information to Google so that straight away it can reduce that wasted spend. Now I'm not gonna sit here and say that there will be no search terms at all that are not targeted towards your broad match keyword. What it will do is it will heavily reduce the amount of wasted ad spend that you're seeing with your keyword targeting. And remember that if you were to use a shorter term exact match keyword with only two words in it or three words in it, even with exact match targeting, you're still gonna see a lot more waste. And I've seen time and time again that when you have a longer term broad match keyword phrase, it's performing much better than a short term exact match keyword phrase. And this all comes down to you giving Google more information about the exact type of keyword or user search terms that you're wanting to target. So that's the main benefit and how you would structure your broad match keywords. But let me also take you onto a little free added benefit of using this strategy. And that is that it heavily reduces the amount of time that you need to do in creating those keyword lists and then breaking them down into all different single keyword ad groups. Because for success now with Google Ads, it's all about setting up campaigns with less ad groups that have more keywords in it. But when you start, you might only have two or three long tail broad match keywords 
in that ad group. And then when you go through and complete your search term audits, you're going in and not only adding in extra negative keywords, but you're also adding in extra exact match keywords that you want to also target within that ad group. And you're only adding those based on data, given that they are converting at a high level or they are really, really specific for keyword phrase or a user search term that you wanna rank highly for. And to help you with all this information, what I wanna do is I wanna give you access to my Google Ads Optimization Checklist. And what this will do is that this will let you know exactly how often you need to complete important tasks like your search term audits. It'll also give you a full list of all of the other optimization actions that you need to complete with all of Google's current updates. And if you would like to get access to that Google Ads Optimization Checklist for your search campaigns, all you need to do is to follow that link in the description below. Thank you for joining me. My name is Aaron Young. I'm from Define Digital Academy and I'm your 15,000 hour Google Ads master. And it has been an absolute pleasure having you right here on my YouTube channel. And if you'd like to learn more about how you should be correctly structuring your Google Ads ad groups, especially with the keyword targeting updates, I want you to go through and watch this video right here. Once again, thank you for joining me and I'll see you in this video right now. See ya.